On this ProGraph tutorial, we're going to talk about making product shots look pretty. Stay tuned. What's up, bros? Welcome to another ProGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss, and it's been a while. Uh, Matt Milstead and I have been building a company for a while, so it's it's been a little bit since we've done a tutorial, but we're back. And if you listen to our podcast, you've heard all about that fun stuff. If you don't listen to our podcast, check it out. It's two and a half hours every week, and it's a lot of fun. We have a ton of listeners, so check it out. And this is going to be the beginning of a product series where we're going to learn how to model a few things. Um, you don't have to have any special render engine for it. We're going to move on to Octane texturing and lighting later on in, in the tutorials after that. But we've actually already done some tutorials about you know Reflectance Channel and uh, doing labels on bottles and stuff like that with Standard Render that you can check out after this one. So today we're going to talk about building a bottle using a lathe or a loft. I prefer lathe because I think it looks better, but sometimes you have to use a loft. And I'm going to show how to do both. So <clears throat> we're going to jump right into it here. We've got a bottle right here that's going to be kind of our reference. And you can find this in the notes, so you could bring this in yourself. I'm going to drag it in here. And I'm going to make a plane, which is on negative Z orientation. Drag it in to the plane. You'll notice that it's all like skinny and stuff. And so we're going to go into the color channel and look at the resolution, 1452 by 812. Now, what I like to do is just type that in here, 1452 by 812, and make the thing, like, huge. So now it's the right uh, aspect ratio, but it's not the right size. So we're going to make a new cube as a reference and just make it 12 by 12 by 12 inches because that bottle's about a foot tall. And if we scale down our reference, then we'll have like relatively close, you know, scene scale. And I'm going to pull this back on uh, negative or on positive Z, I guess, uh, so that uh, we can, uh, we won't have any intersecting weirdness going on whenever we start building. And I'm going to delete the cube. We don't need that anymore. You notice the resolution is pretty bad. So... If we click on our material, go to editor and texture preview size, we can change this to 4 or 16. I'm going to choose 16. And also, reflectance, we don't want that. We're going to go to the basic tab and turn off reflectance so we don't have that weird specular, like washed out look. The next thing I'm going to do is go into the front view and hit S. We've centered up our reference and go to display and turn on something that is not wireframe so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go to the pen tool and I'm going to zoom in and start at the bottom. Now, get as close to the middle as you can. I'm not going to be 100% perfect with this for the tutorial because uh, that would just take a really long time to just get everything like 100% perfect if you're doing this for a client or something you probably want to spend a little more time getting this like super super perfect so that it looks awesome but this would be like an eight hour tutorial if I did that so on the inside because we're not going to be modeling the lip I'm just gonna stop right here and hit escape that's that's it that's all we're doing um, I'm not gonna worry about what this part looks like. So if you're going to take the cap off your bottle, you're going to want to do that part. But for this, we're not going to do that. I'm going to save. ABC, always be saving. Go up to the plane. I'm going to call it ref, because it's the reference. Turn it off, and you'll see the contour here going on. Under spline, you can see the different points. I'm going to select all. Um, also, I'm going to come in here and copy and paste so we have a second spline. I'm going to scale the second spline just a little bit and move it over to the right. So we have this double contour thing going on. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is because a bottle is not a solid piece of glass all the way through. I have a, 
of a version here that you can see in my octane window here. If I have a solid piece of glass, it's going to look like a magnifying glass. We don't want that look. That looks weird. So let me turn that off. I'm going to go back to where I was. Second thing we're going to do is take both splines and we're going to connect and delete them. Now I have a reference for that. I, uh, or I'm sorry, a shortcut for that up here at the top. And if you need to look for it, you can hit Shift C, like you can do for anything in um, in Cinema 4D, and you can type connect. And there it is, objects and delete right there. Or you can do a shortcut. I have tons of shortcuts. So now this is one spline. And the other thing that we want to do here at the top, we want to connect these two for the lip of the bottle. I'm going to take this one and this one. And I'm going to hit Shift C and I'm going to say join. Join segment is what we want. It connects those two. Now down at the bottom, we have got uh, these two little sections, these two little spots points on the splines and we do not want them to close. If we hit close what's going to happen is you're going to get this weird overlappy weird thing um, and so we're going to keep them open because we want this to connect and continue going on around to the other side. The other thing that we want is for these to be exactly the same. Right now this is negative 0.072 on X and we want this this to be exactly the same so I'm just gonna copy paste it in here so they're even and then we are going to go up to this menu here and create a lathe um, I'm going to um, offset the X of this lathe so that it matches those two points on the spline. And I'm going to put the spline inside the lathe like this. Now we have our bottle going on. So the next step, uh, just for reference for me, you don't have to do this, you can if you want. Just so I can see what I'm doing, I would like to create uh, a new octane material. <clears throat> and it's going to be a specular material. I'm throwing it on here so that I can just kind of see what I'm doing as I go. The other thing I'm going to do for my reference is throw in a BroGraph Quick Sky just so I can look and check out what I'm doing. Now this may or may not be uh, like too thick around the edges. We're going to come in and, and just kind of fine tune all of this. So in my front view I'm going to change this now and go to a wireframe mode and um, lines. And actually, it would probably help if I turn off lathe. And some of this is uneven. You can spend quite a bit of time trying to get that right. In this case, uh, we're not going to spend too long on that. We are going to make it look a little bit thinner. Um, if you're doing this professionally, you really want to spend some time on this to make it perfectly even. I'm go down here, do this part too. Now, when we get to the bottom, you'll notice on this bottle and on most bottles like this, you actually have a piece that kind of um, is curved on the bottom. It goes up just a little bit and we're going to do that by just taking this piece a little spliny area bringing it up and then just extending the handles of the splines so we get that nice curve going so there we go there's our bottle outline and if I turn the lathe back on and go to perspective view I'm going to just power up my render engine here so we can check it out there we go. Now we do have some weird segmenty things going on. Um, I am going to look at lines as well here on my shading so that I can see what's going on. You'll notice uh, first of all 
we don't have a lot of segments going on around. So in the lathe, I'm going to change my subdivisions and this smooths it out. And you're really going to want to get that up there at least 120. Um, you're doing something like this. It's going to be really pretty. It's going to be really precise. So you really want to have that. Uh, you want to have a lot of polygons. You want to make it look really, um, really smooth. The other thing is that some of these areas look a little bit segmented and that is not coming from the lathe that's coming from the spline. So if I actually take my angle down a bit, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to get a lot of lines going on in here and that's not necessarily always a good thing. Um, you have choices. If this doesn't look good enough for you, you can go in and you can do, um, you know, uniform, um, instead but you're going to get like a whole bunch more uh, segments going all the way down the bottle. We don't necessarily need all that. I think this is okay for now because if anything looks a little jaggedy or a little angled, I can go in and actually adjust that spline. So for example, right here, this just doesn't look smooth enough to me. So I'm just going to take those handles and bring them out a little bit. And to me, that's better in order to keep the adaptive... Um, the adaptive spline and not have to change it to a different type. So there is the bottle. Now we're going to do the exact same thing now, but we're going to do it as a loft. So I'm going to turn my reference back on and I'm going to turn the lathe off so we can't see any of this. We'll come back to it later because we're not done with it. We're going to do the rest of our bottle with that lathe. But just to show how you would do it with a loft, I'm going to do that uh, here now. The way that you would do that is with circles. And I'm going to start out with one big circle. Scale it down a little bit here. The first thing is do that uh, XZ plane for your orientation. We're going to start at the bottom. Scale it down, center it up a little bit. Now this is going to be the first part of our loft. I'm going to select a loft now and put the circle in it because we're actually going to watch this as we go. And I'm going to hold down command. Uh, it would be control if you're on um, a PC, which I sometimes am. I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to scale it. And then I'm going to do another one. Bring it all the way up here. And I'm going to scale it. So this is kind of like creating those different points along the way. But instead, we're just duplicating by hitting uh, Command or Control or Option or whatever it is. Control on the PC. Same thing here, just meeting those contours. Just duplicating over and over. You can see it coming together there, my octane view. See that? I don't necessarily like that. I'm going to undo. I'm going to bring it down. Just didn't have quite what I wanted there. I'll do it again. Oops. Scale it. So you can see how you would go about lofting this. And the reason that you would want to do this is like if you're building something that kind of goes from circle to square or circle to rounded square, that's really the only way that you're going to be able to do that. Um, a loft wouldn't work in that case. So I'm sorry, a, a lathe wouldn't work in that case. So doing the inside is what you have to worry about in this as well. And there's a different way to do that because you want to have the inside. My preferred method, honestly, for doing this is to work backwards. So we have all of these going up. Now we're going to bring them all the way back down. Uh, so I'm going to go to, uh, we've got number nine here. And every time we add one, it puts it on the bottom. So we're just going to work backwards. We got up to number nine. This will make sense when you see it. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, command drag or control drag if you're on a PC circle number sorry circle number eight 
and then seven, jeez, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the main circle. So we have like, it goes all the way up and all the way down. Let me show you what this looks like here. If we go back to lines, turn off our loft. They're all the same right now. So I'm going to take 10. You can see nine was at the top then 10. 10 all the way down is what we created. I'm going to scale them in, but I'm not going to scale them on Y. So I'm going to turn Y off and just scale in this direction. I have point on. I need to have the correct mode on here. So what that's doing is that's bringing every single one of these in ever so slightly. It'll make more sense in this view. You can see it's the same exact thing now. There's a double of everything, but it's in the inside. That's creating that secondary um, area to, so that you will have a hollow inside. And I believe, yeah, this, this top one, number nine, I failed to duplicate. So I'm just going to put it next to itself and bring it in. So you can see it's just slightly smaller circles. That's all it is. And so if I turn my loft back on, now you can see it just goes all the way down and looks hollow. It's very simple. Um, the bottom, we'll take a look at that in a minute because we're going to want to uh, work on our uh, curve. But you'll notice that uh, it's very segmented as well. And the segmenting is going to be just slightly different on this. So um, on your loft, you can adjust these subdivisions in this direction. And you'll notice that you're you're doing your subdivisions in both directions on here. As to before, you were controlling it through the lath and the spline angle. So it's it's all done here. Um, you know that in that right, it gives you a little bit more control. It looks a little bit more even. But what you'll notice now, if I put this texture on top of this loft and I power it up, I just don't like the way that the refraction looks. Now, some of this has to do with the octane settings, which you can adjust. Um, and some of it has to do with the fact that the circles may be a little too far in. But, you know, what happens is it just doesn't give you the same exact look. I don't like it. So, um, again, you can adjust some of this inside of your uh, octane settings. But we're not doing octane today anyway, so that really doesn't matter. This won't look exactly like that. Uh, if you're using standard render and um, it's just not necessary to go through all this trouble when you could just lathe something the only reason you would want to go through all of this trouble is if you were doing something like a crown bottle or a rounded rectangle like an actual you know Johnny Walker bottle so um, that's kind of that's kind of all we're gonna talk about on lofting right now because um, lathing just works better and it's a lot easier to control. So with all of that off, I'm going to go back to the lathe and we're going to continue on and make the cap. Oh, and also, I guess I forgot to show you the bottom of the bottle. If I go into front, I'm going to grab that bottom piece there. So this is the bottom on the inside so I can bring it up and then the bottom here. That gives me that control so that so that I can bring them in. See what that does there? It brings it up at the same time. I've got the first one and the last one. That gives me the the curvature on the bottom. But again, uh, not something that's really necessary to learn right now. But if you're doing a square bottle or a rounded square bottle, it would be important. Back to the lathe. All right, now we want to do the cap. And uh, this cap is navy blue in real life, but we're going to do a red one. So 
I'm going to put my shading back on so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the bottle off for a minute, but let's name it before we get all confused. ABC, always be naming. There's the bottle. I'm going to delete the loft that we created because we don't need to confuse ourselves right now. And I'm going to use the pen tool. We're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start at this. Uh, no, sorry. I'm going to start in the middle. Nope. <laughs> I lied. Um, so this doesn't have a bottom piece if you were to take that off. And so I'm going to start down here. Create these same contours. But the only difference in this is that we don't care as much about the inside. So if I hit escape, so we have this contour, um, what I would like to do, because I'm not going to see the inside of this, is uh, command drag. So I get a bit of um, the inside of the cap, but we really don't care what the inside looks like. So this is just kind of the hacked way of doing it. And now you remember we had the spline center before, which was set to negative 0.072 inches. We're going to do the same on this one so that they are the same. I'm going to make sure that my handles are straight. That's good. Now I'm going to go in and create a lathe. Negative 0.072. And there is our cap. And we'll turn on our bottle. Now, that is not centered. <laughs> so, let's fix that. I'm going to take everything except this center piece right here. I'm going to select it. You'll notice if I if I bring it in and out, that's actually changing the overall size. I'm going to select all. I'm sorry. I'm going to select the lathe. And move that over. So we're nice and centered up here. All right. That's better. Now, everything in here is like off center. And I don't want to adjust it yet because I was waiting for these two pieces to be done. So I'm going to um, hit Option G so that they're inside of a null. And here's our crazy offset position that we've been working with. I'm going to set it to zero because we don't care about the reference anymore. I'm going to turn it off. I think we still have a bit of, of overlap going on. This just isn't the right size. But our entire model is now set to origin, which is what we want. Um, let me take those points again. This is a really thin uh, cap and uh, paper. It's not like uh, rubber or it's not like the bottles that have the wax tops. So we don't want to have much overlap. Um, another thing I'm going to do here is take the, um, the axis center by using the enable access shortcut just up here so that when I'm clicking on my lathe and I'm moving it around I'm not having to zoom out and grab it from down below and see now that's centered and it's just ever so slightly bigger than the bottle itself and that's really what we need All right, so you'll notice here too, like if I come in and look at the cap, that uh, we have these segments going on. We also have this craziness going on here, uh, the top of the spline. Let's look at that. Um, I don't believe that's in the correct spot. Our world position now for the, the lathe, now that we've nulled everything, is negative 0.011 inches. So this spline just needs to be at the exact same spot, the spline point. So I'm just going to rein that in there. It fixes the top. You just have to have it perfect or you start getting holes. Like if this were here, you know, or here, you just have this, a hole. Or if you went the other direction, then you get all sorts of craziness. It has to be, like, perfect. 
So we'll do the same thing with the lathe now. We're going to do 120 segments, and then we're also going to go into the spline if we need to and adjust the angle. We really don't want to get our polygon count up if we don't have to, but I like how that looks. That's pretty good, I guess. I'm going to save and create a new octane texture just for my own benefit in this. If you're not in octane, then you can just go ahead and do that in standard render so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we got a bottle. The next thing we need to do is create the um, liquor that goes in the inside. And um, I like to do a liquor color as close as I can when I build it. And I literally just hold it up like this and kind of eyeball the two colors, it does the trick. So to create that, we're going to turn off the lathe for the top, which we're also going to name because we should do that. And then on the bottle, I'm going to turn that off as well. And I'm going to copy it by holding down command or control and just dragging it. This is going to be Lycra. And I'm going to turn that on so we can see. Now, in our front view, we're going to go to standard lines. And we have we want the spline on, but we want to turn off lathing for a second so that we can see what's going on. Um, we want to now do that full um, that that full all the way through solid lathe because that's what the liquor is, unlike the bottle. And so the easiest way to do that is by doing this copy because we can now go in and start deleting the outer points. There we go. So the other thing is that our liquor is solid. So what we're going to want to do is create the line of liquor. And the liquor is not going to go all the way up to the top. It's going to go like, I don't know, um, a little bit below the neck. Let's say like right here just for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to delete all those points like I did just then. And I'm going to... A copy drag which is command or control my liquor to the center it needs to match this point which is negative 0.009 for those centering reasons again we're just gonna paste that in and it's all wonky we're just gonna grab the handle make it straight here now on this one we don't want to affect the curvature here we just want to go straight across if you hold down shift and grab the handle then we'll make it straight and you can straighten it out so, if I turn on my liquor now, fire up my render engine just so we can see what we're doing. We've got this uh, solid piece of liquor, and I'm just going to make this a liquidy texture for visual purposes. We'll worry about all the coloring and everything in another tutorial so the next thing that we're gonna do uh, for me uh, so I can see what I'm doing and for you octane users I'm going to change my index of refraction uh, because of the refraction is already happening in the bottle in the bottle 1.01 we don't really want any refraction going on because it's gonna make everything look funky and um, I want to be able to show you guys what this is going to look like for those of you who are not using Octane Render. So let me turn on the bottle and let that render. And now you'll see what we got going on here is the liquor inside the bottle. And what I like to do um, is get that little edge going that you see sometimes in the bottle. You see a little of the edge of the glass separating the liquor because this looks like too flush and we might even have some intersections going on because the spline is in the exact same place if we look at the front view we turn off lofts so I'm going to turn off my render engine for a minute you can see that there if I select both splines and just select all points you can see that they're in the exact same place 
And so most likely there's some intersections going on and we're not going to be able to see that cool little separation that goes on. And the easiest way to do this is to select the liquor spline and we're going to do a rectangular selection with our point selection and select everything but the center points because we don't want to move the centers because that will screw everything up and will make it look funky. So I'm selecting just these points minus the center points so that I can then just take and just bring these in ever so slightly. That might even be too much. I'm not sure. So we're just going to go down and make sure that nothing is in contact with another point anymore. Now this, uh, these two here, because we brought them right and not we didn't scale them, they're still on the same plane. So we can just tick them up just a little bit. Just have a little bit of liquor separation. So turning everything back on, we've got our splines and our... Uh, or lathes on. I'm going to see what that looks like visually. You can use whatever render engine you want. Now, look at the edges. Now we have kind of that separation thing going on, which is kind of cool. Makes it look a little more believable. Now we'll put the top on. Boom. There we go. And we just have some generic flat textures right now, but that's pretty much how you build it. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to go over how to add a label. We're going to go over how to add a little bit of um, a bump around the cap. We're going to talk about uh, may maybe possibly doing some... Um, some uh, bump mapping in the glass. Like if you look at some of the... Uh, stuff going on here. Some bottles have that. Sometimes you can just get away with not doing this part because no one's going to see it. But, um, you know, sometimes there's bumps like in the front here, braille, or uh, in the case of something like maybe, um, oh, I don't know, vodka, like a Smirnoff. They have like a whole bunch of like crazy embossed lettering and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to learn how to do. If you don't have Octane, you can go back to our old tutorial about putting the label on this particular bottle. And uh, it's the reflectance tutorial. If not, go ahead and go to the next tutorial and we'll continue on from there.